What's up? I'm back with another video. Today I'm going to be looking at two amazing rangefinder cameras, the Leica M4P and the Leica M6, and comparing the two cameras to see whether or not it's worth the price of the upgrade. Uh, spoiler alert, I think it is because I'm about to sell the M4P because I recently bought the M6. How much does it actually matter what camera that you shoot with? A lot of people will say it doesn't matter at all. They'll say that the only camera that matters is the one that you have with you. I agree to an extent, however, some cameras are more likely than others to encourage you to bring them around with you. Leica has made a name for themselves creating these Rangefinder M cameras for many, many years, and the differences between them are not always very obvious. Um, since the M3 that came out in the 1950s, the changes that have been made to the cameras is only minor from one model to the next. A lot of the Leica snobs will, uh, will tell you not to get the M4P. For starters, because it was made in Canada and not in Germany. So what's the story of these two cameras? Well, the Leica M6 is the cult Leica M film camera. Uh, it's the one kind of the holy grail for rangefinder shooters. Um, it's praised for its simplicity, for its uh, reliability, for the, the sound of the shutter, the smooth crank of the film advance, and just the design is pretty much perfect for those who like the simplicity of the Leica aesthetic. Um, then you have the M4P. This camera is can partially be credited with saving the Leica brand when it was uh, not making enough money after poor sales from the Leica M5. Um, the Leica production was moved from Germany to Canada, so you can see here, made in Canada. All Leica M4Ps and M4Ts were made in Canada. And the reason why these ones are um, looked down on by Leica snobs is because the introduction of these cameras um, was around the time when Leica started using uh, cheaper parts instead of uh, hand making some, uh, some of the internal gears and stuff. They were machine produced, which meant that they were more likely to break. Um, however, even with all that said, um, the top is not brass like on the M3, uh, the top and bottom plates. I believe they're made of uh, magnesium or something like that. But still, it is a very precise instrument, a very well-made camera. And <clears throat> from the outside, you really can almost not see any differences between these two cameras. Now, the, the version of uh, the Leica M6 that, I'm, that I currently bought, that I own, is the titanium version, uh, which is kind of, I don't know, a gimmick in a way, because it's only, um, it's not real titanium, or it's just like some millimeter or like micron thick coating of titanium to the regular uh, top. I think, that, I'm not actually sure. Hmm. Uh, top plates, like M6 top plate, brass versus zinc. So zinc, the top and bottom plates of the Leica M4P are made of zinc and the same, but the same is actually true of the Leica M6. It's actually arguable that the Leica M6 uses even cheaper parts than the Leica M4P because the cost saving methods that they started with the Leica M4P, they continued even further with the Leica M6. You can kind of see like this dial here feels a bit more sturdy than the one. This one here is maybe even plastic or something like that. Feels like less sturdy. And also the camera itself is just a bit lighter, which means it's probably more plastic parts. Um, in any case, both have a zinc top and bottom plate. 
not brass like the older M, uh, M3, M2, M4. There are a lot more similarities than differences when it comes to these two cameras, to be honest. Um, <clears throat> the viewfinders are both the same, 0.72 magnification, which is optimized for 35mm lenses, but can can handle uh, lenses as wide as 28 millimeters without requiring external viewfinders. Um, but you can see the the design of the viewfinder here is a little bit inset, whereas here it's flat. I don't know, it's like sort of hard to see. But when you look through, it doesn't really make any difference at all. Both look pretty much the same. Maybe this one is a little bit like hazier but it could just be that it's older and could use a cleaning. Uh, the viewfinder patch is the same. Um, here you have like the, a few external differences where the Leica lights red dot is over here instead of in the top, like the classic um, M6 look. But that's just aesthetic really. Uh, on the back you can see here you have like this, <laughs> instead of uh, ISO selector like you have on the M6 where you choose your ISO. The M4P has a little ISO picture where you are supposed to mark with a marker maybe which ISO you're using. I've never actually marked it because it seems stupid. Uh, but it's the same sort of uh, the same sort of design. The bottom plate design is the same. It uses the same um, film spooling technique. You can see inside is pretty much identical, but I can feel like this the door here on the M4P is made of a heavier material. This one, this one is clearly lighter, uh, and also this piece here feels like it's maybe plastic on the M6, but on this one it's definitely metal. Or is it? No, it's not. It's maybe plastic on both, to be honest. On the M6 it feels like it's lighter materials around this area than on the M4P. So you might be wondering, uh, in practice, what is the actual difference between these two cameras? Well, there's only one difference, really, and that is that the M6 has a light meter, the M4P does not. Um, that's it. If you can live without a light meter, or if you prefer using an external light meter, I don't see any reason why you would get the M6 over the M4P unless you're a collector and you just want the M6 because it's the M6. Um, the M4P is pretty much the same design. I mean, it was made, it was the camera that came right before the M6 was released. And so design-wise, it's almost exactly the same. Quality-wise, it's pretty much the same as well. You're gonna get the same photos with both cameras, obviously, because the body has really nothing to do with the quality of the photos that you take. Um, some people will argue that this is a better quality camera because it was made in Germany. Um, others will argue that this is a better quality camera because the M6 had more cost-cutting measures than the M4P. Um, yeah, the viewfinders are the same, the, the shutters are the same, has the same frame lines, the same shutter speeds, uh, the same type of like uh, two-part film crank as opposed to the older one on the M3 and the newer one on the MP. Uh, so yeah, but that of course can be switched out if you really want to switch it. Um, I noticed this one feels a little bit smoother. Uh, changing, the, changing the shutter speed is a little bit smoother and cranking the film is a little bit smoother. This one is a little more like you have to put a little more effort into it, but it could just be like it needs that it needs a CLA or something like that. Um, but in any case, really, there's <laughs> really the main difference is the light meter. One has a light meter, one doesn't, and that's it. This camera I've shot for about a year. I've been using it, and it's been totally fine for the most part. You can just guess the. Uh, the exposure, you take the Sunny 16 roll and you just kind of like morph it into whatever situation you're in. And after a while you kind of get to see, you can kind of see the light without needing a light meter. 
and it's not always perfect and you can make mistakes, but 90% of the time, 99% of the time, it works out totally fine. Maybe I'll do another video about that as well, because I think it's like, it's actually a good, it's good practice to buy a camera like this that has no light meter, that has basically, is basically the perfect camera to learn to meter without a light meter, if you are into that kind of thing. The thing is like, it gets it gets a bit frustrating in low light or uh, in the long dark winter months. Um, it's a little harder to guess the light without a light meter indoors and in low light. Okay, so now you know that there really isn't much difference between these two cameras. Um, so why am I selling the M4P and keeping the M6? Well. The main reason is because there are times when I just want to have the light meter available. Um, there are times when I don't feel like pre-guessing the, the light all the time, or there are times when um, I'll be shooting in a situation and I just want to like double check the exposure where it's kind of important that I don't mess it up. Because there have been times where I've underexposed or overexposed, or more often underexposed, uh, with this camera thinking like thinking that I chose the right exposure, but then kind of like messing it up a little it Almost it's almost never the case But there are a few occasions where I just wish that I had a light meter and this one is nice because it's built in um, and Then the reason why I got this one over the M7 for example is that the M7 when the battery dies you can't shoot with it. But this camera, without a battery, you can still shoot it exactly the same as this camera. It's like almost the identical camera, except that this one has a meter that tells you. So there's no like automated exposure on this one. It is just a meter that tells you what direction to go in a higher shutter speed or a lower shutter speed. And that's it. Um, so the battery dies, the meter doesn't work, but then the camera works just fine. So. In practice, I can use this camera in the same way that I've used the M4P for the past year without a battery, and it's fine. Um, and maybe I'll do that sometimes, but I just wanted the option to have uh, the light meter. And you can also kind of chalk it up to the fact that uh, you always kind of wonder what the next best thing is. Uh, so I've been shooting for this, shooting for a year with the M4P, and I kind of just like, you know, Every time I'm looking online, everybody's talking about the M6 and how great it is, and I was just curious, like, to try it. I just wanted to try it, and now that I got both, I was going to decide which one I wanted to keep and sell the other one, um, and I decided I'm going to keep the M6. Just, you know, because then I don't have to, like, wish for it or want it later. Um, the price difference for these two cameras, okay, uh, I'm in Norway right now, so I'm thinking in crowns. But relatively, uh, this camera was six and a half thousand crowns, which is like maybe seven hundred and fifty dollars. Norway's kind of expensive, and this one was ten thousand, so that's maybe like twelve hundred dollars. So the price was like four, four or five hundred dollars difference. Uh, is it worth it? It depends on how much money you've got to waste. Uh, if you have like a full time job and you really just want to throw money at your camera hobby, I don't see why not, really. Uh, but if you're like on a budget and you want a cheap uh, or a cheaper Leica, you want to get the Leica experience but you don't want to spend a lot, I really don't think there's anything wrong with getting the M4P. Um, I think the M4P is like, it's a, good, it's a good choice as an intro to the Leica cameras because it's really similar to, it's similar to the M6 and the newer M7 in design. It's kind of similar to the digital Leicas in design as well. Uh, I got This was my first Leica, and that's why I got digital Leicas, and that's why I got the M6. So this was the one that kind of started me down the path. Um, and it wasn't that expensive, like 700 bucks. That's like, uh, I don't know, a crappy APS-C DSLR or something. Like, sounds like a lot, but then you realize that this camera could last you like 50 years, and then whereas in five years, like the digital camera that you buy for the same price is just gonna be worthless. So it's actually like not a bad investment as long as they don't stop making film. Um, and the lens that's available for these cameras and the rangefinder shooting experience, I think is top notch. It's 
pretty perfect. Um, so I, I really have nothing against this camera. Uh, I think that from what I from what I've read that it, the M4P is um, made to a higher standard than the M4 II. I think the M4 II is slightly cheaper and easier to get, but maybe a little more likely to crap out on you. Um, of all of the Leica cameras, I think the M4, or at least the M film cameras, I think the M4 II is maybe like the cheapest made. Um, but I think this one is, it's good, but I'm going to, I'm going to stick with the M6 for now. And, uh, that's pretty much it. Not so much difference between the M4P and the M6, really. Not so much difference at all.